Okay, so the next type of coastline or shoreline is a delta uh, associated with rivers which bring in lots of sediments, nutrients, organic matter and so on. Um, that depends on what's on the watershed. Watershed is where all the rain that falls uh, gets collected into tributaries and the tributaries flow into the main river that will flow all the way out into the oceans or the regional sea or the Gulf. So Mississippi Delta is one of the more famous ones. You can see a nice image of it and you can see this uh, bird's foot kind of structure. So lots of sediments uh, come in, uh, millions of tons per year, and it accumulates and before it gets uh, taken away by the uh, uh, longshore transport or flows out into the open ocean, more sediment comes in and then it begins to make these burrows or uh, these kind of uh, structures, distributaries, you can think of uh, distributaries uh, in the suspended sediment which from the space looks like a nice uh, bird foot kind of structure. Um, obviously when you have a, a huge river shed, watershed, for example the Mississippi drains into the Gulf of Mexico and its watershed goes all the way to the border of Canada. Obviously the so-called flood plain of the river has been modified a lot over the decades and centuries. Lots of forests have been removed, urbanization has happened and enormous amount of agriculture. The bread basket of the US happens to be along these, uh, wa along this watershed which means you're going to change the sediment loading, you're going to change the nutrient loading uh, for the same amount of rain you're going to get more runoff so flooding characteristics are going to be different and so on and so forth and we'll see that that also makes a difference in how the marine life is uh, affected. So this is a uh, image showing the relative change from 1973 to 1989 to 2003 and uh, it turns out that 1973 was a big El Nino so maybe that had something to do with the uh, relatively larger looking 1989 footprint of the delta here but there have been decadal changes as well. Decadal change means uh, the climate remains in uh, one kind of uh, uh, regime or with the amount of rain and temperature and winds and so on and then it switches to higher amounts, lower amounts and so on. So you can see here that 1989 looks bigger or it may be because the floodplain changed in a certain way that it created more sediments for the same amount of rain, right? Agricultural land may wash off more soils than a forest, for example, right? But by 2003 you can see that it's much smaller than uh, 1973 or 1989. So there is a way to uh, take these kind of changes, you can detect the change and then try to see what caused the change. Uh, we won't go into the details but just because they look different you cannot directly blame humans. You have to actually show that there are causal links, that there are processes that were changed by humans that affected the amount of rain or the runoff or the sediments and so on and so forth. Okay. The other famous delta, of course, is the Nile Delta, one of the few rivers that flows north. Uh, Nile has uh, like the White Nile and the Blue Nile and so on. Uh, one of them originates in Lake Victoria, which is a massive lake in uh, central eastern uh, Africa. And uh, the delta shorelines get smoothed out when erosion exceeds deposition. So there's a certain amount of uh, sediment coming in with the rivers and then there is the ocean processes that are taking out the sediments. Okay, So Nile River Delta is currently uh, eroding so it doesn't have this huge uh, bird's foot structure going out into the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, So there have been many dams built upstream, uh, lots of exploitation. You have to remember this: all these uh, deltas, they tend to be 
very rich organic soils with lots of nutrients so they are very good not only for fishing uh, but also for agriculture so obviously they tend to get exploited a lot and with sea level rise and so on some of the deltas get, are getting inundated by ocean water delta is dominated by the river water so it's good for agriculture but if the sea level rises or the land subsides and the ocean comes in then you're going to have a lot of salt water that's not good right so uh, ganga brahmaputra delta some people call it ganga brahmaputra meghna delta is now become a poster child for climate change in terms of how close it is to the sea level so any sea level rise is going to make it much more vulnerable for inundation plus the Bay of Bengal is warming, Indian Ocean is warming, number of cyclones uh, may be increasing, cyclones may be getting more intense, they may be getting intense very fast, it's called rapid intensification population grows so more people live closer to the water and so on so this region which is also a very lush mangrove forest used to be at least uh, is being uh, the mangrove forest is being destroyed sea level is rising in fact the rivers that come down from the Himalayas have some of the highest sediment loading because the Himalayas is constantly rising about a centimeter per year exposing more material heavy monsoon rain washes down a lot of the sediments that sediment accumulates in the Bay of Bengal and it actually pushes the uh, plate down so relatively speaking there is subsidence so the sea level rise is accelerating three to four times the global average so global average is let's say about uh, one to three millimeters per year here it could be up to ten millimeters per year that's a lot okay uh, it's hard to imagine but imagine that you have a one centimeter rise in sea level and then a cyclone comes in it's going to sweep in so much more water right and all these fishing villages agricultural land everything is going to get inundated again and again and again and often these small islands cannot even be vacated even if there is a very good warning for a cyclone and a flood and so on and so forth so many many thousands of people die often because of these disasters and climate change and sea level rise and the warming and the cyclones is just not a good situation for this uh, delta we will talk a little bit more about the loss of mangroves and what it means and the very rich habitat the mangroves provide the protection they provide against cyclones and so on and so forth so human activities uh, in these uh, mangrove forests and wetlands and salt marshes is generally been uh, very negative that's not a good thing so many efforts are being made to save them to protect them to reduce the damage and there is some good news that maybe loss of mangroves is slowing down not stopped but slowing down